Pain, that medically elusive evil. What about changing the focus from controlling pain to understanding pain as more than a symptom? Can pain be cheated? My name is Dr. Dean, chiropractor and physiotherapist. My goal is to reframe how medicine understands pain to improve care. This podcast series is dedicated to a same-day conservative treatment for low back pain. This podcast has a companion published article number 16. Welcome to the Pain is Not the Only Problem podcast. The essentiality of conservative care is being reevaluated. The contributors to patient symptoms are being re-explored. All options are on the table. Article 16, Pain is Not the Only Problem. Afferent Signal Loading Part 2. These articles intend to reevaluate the prevailing clinical practices thought to manage low back pain, submit and debate novel low back pain contributors and mechanisms, meet patient expectations and satisfaction and clinically meaningful results, recommend a conservative non-surgical course of care to override pain instantly, and restore ADLs and patient confidence on the first visit at low cost. Afferent signaling describes the sense signals of tissue origin associated with touch, temperature, vibration, joint position, muscle work, and the idea of pain. Sense signals of pain are commonly associated with tissue damage such as traumatic injury, acute healing, non-traumatic conditions, and diseases. However, the commonest presentation in low back pain is a dull, achy, broad, diffuse, annoying discomfort, and occasionally with a sense of radiation, sharpness, pinching, or tightness. In grad school, they taught us that different kinds of pain can describe different kinds of low back injuries. And while that might be true in theory, I found it to be less helpful in practice. I found that regardless of the patient's description of the low back pain, it was not helpful in determining the diagnosis. In part one, I presented a basic platform to explain how nerve diameter size plus number of motor units fired by that nerve plus the muscle tension associated with that nerve determines the loading sequence for the nerve. Certain nerve sense signals are prioritized, loading first and arriving afferently at the cortex first. The priority of loading order goes like this. First, A gamma fibers, muscle spindles, muscle speed of shortening. So we're talking about isometric and slackened states. Second, A beta fibers, Golgi tendon organs, tension on the tendon related to the tension on the muscle. Golgi tendon organs are non-contractile. Third, A beta fibers, vibration, joint position, includes the inherent oscillation of muscle contraction. Fourth, A beta fibers, deep dermal pressure, broad dermal pressure, and two-point discrimination. This also includes light touch, slick or smooth touch, rough touch, and palpation identification. Fifth, A delta fibers, temperature, wet or dry, sharp and pinch pain, spicy pain. Last, C fibers, slow pain, dull, achy, burning, gut pain, and deep pressure. It is no wonder why therapists use cryotherapy and heat as a treatment, since this sense signal is loaded before pain. The brain is paying more attention to the temperature than to pain. Better yet, light touch is loaded before temperature. Deep tissue massage is not as successful as light massage, since it is loaded after light massage. In theory, light massage should give better distraction than hot or cold therapy. I use the word distraction rather than loading priority in my everyday conversation with patients. Distraction means that I am managing the experience of my patient's brain by asking their brain to listen for something other than pain, which is the lowest priority. Listening means that the patient's brain is focused on a therapy or on a sense. That is the highest priority. 
since it is loaded first, second, or third, or all three priorities at once. However, the distraction technique does not cause healing or provide a palliative effect for much longer than the treatment time. There are no lasting effects. Techniques like ART and MFR and foam rolling only cause more tissue damage, delay healing, and are loaded at the last priority, having no benefits. Again, techniques like ART, MFR, and foam rolling only cause more tissue damage, delay healing, and are loaded at the last priority, providing no benefit. So why would sports taping provide some relief? Let's think on that. Critically thinking, we can begin to understand why low back pain patients suffer more than other chronically onset complaints. Chronic low back pain forces patients out of activity, out of exercise, and even usual ADLs. When movement begins to vanish from the low back pain patient's lifestyle, muscle activity dwindles or ceases, especially concerning core activation and the use of the largest motor groups like the hip flexors, the hip extenders, spinal erectors, glutes, and lats. When core activation ceases, the transversus and urogenital diaphragm or pelvic floor, the multifidi and the respiratory diaphragm weaken and become less responsive to spinal loading and to providing spinal stability. The low back pain patient is not providing core activation and larger muscle groups sense signaling diminishes. Just as it is possible to get the brain to listen to light touch to give palliative care by providing a higher priority sense signal than pain, when a higher priority sense signal is missing, it causes the lower priority sense signals to be prioritized. If the first three priorities are missing and in the absence of thermal treatment and massage, the only priority remaining for the brain to listen to is to pain. Low back pain patients are in chronic pain because there's nothing other than the pain sense signal to listen to. This kind of listening has consequences. The brain starts to assign the pain sense signal to the fifth priority, so temperatures become painful. Then to the fourth priority, so deep touch becomes painful. Then to the third, second, and first. At this point, all core activated and large motor group movements become painful and the therapy is at a standstill. Well, not really. Keep reading my articles. This article's message is to discuss the importance of understanding why the priority of sense signals can, on one hand, explain why certain therapies might offer palliative aid, and on the other hand, explain how chronic pain develops. Now it should be very clear that pain is not the only problem. Please listen to this podcast again. Thank you for joining me today. Let's advocate for improved patient satisfaction and for the profession. Let's demonstrate a cross-culture willingness to strengthen medicine. Thank you.